To continue our talk about two three trees, uh, I mentioned in the first video that you know lots of data structures use these rotations to take a binary search tree and balance it. And two three trees, they look like they don't do that, right? They look like well, they don't have rotations. They're not actually binary. On the other hand, if you think about the comparisons that you do, like if I want to to look for a node. If I want to look for the search for an 11, you know, like first I compare against five in this case, then I compare against 10, then maybe I compare against 20, and after comparing against both of those, I got down to this middle child of 11. And, uh, you know, the comparisons, of course, you're still comparison one value against another one at a time. Those are binary comparisons, right? There's sort of a natural binary comparison of two values. So I'm going to say as well, even though we don't have to think about rotations when we do a binary, when we do a two three tree, there sort of really is kind of an underlying binary tree. So I can take this two three tree on the left and imagine that it is a binary tree on the right, where this sort of big weird looking node, well, it still looks like a binary tree, right? If I want to, if I want to search for a value. Or in this case, okay, I want to insert an 18. How do I do that? Well, from my 2, 3, tree view, I go 18 is bigger than 5, move to the right child. Well, the same thing happens in the binary view. Then I go, well, 18 is bigger than 10. 18 is bigger than 10 over here, too. 18 is less than 20. Those are two comparisons that take place within the 2, 3, tree view of things. Two, two comparisons in one node. But of course, we could imagine that that's just a, that 2, 3 node, that node with two keys, is sort of implemented by two little binary nodes, right? Hey, if you're smaller than the 10, go to the left child. If you're smaller than the 20, but larger, if you're bigger than the 10, go to the 20. And if you're smaller than 20, go to the middle child. And if you're bigger than the 20, go to the right child. So in this case, we have an 18. 18 is smaller than 20. Move down to this middle child and move on, right? And I've only sort of blown up this one single node, but we could imagine every node with more than one key really has an underlying binary key structure within it, okay? So what happens? Hey. I want to insert that 18. 18 makes my leaf too big. What happens? When a leaf gets too big, it splits apart. The center value, 17, moves up to the chop, moves up to the parent, and 18 and 17 split apart. Okay? Now in this case, the 17 moved up, I'll just sort of temporarily put it into this node, and I know that the 17 keeps the 11 and the 18 apart from each other. It splits them. Now in my two, three tree view of this problem, I go, oh, I imagine the 17 is in the middle. But if I look over here, I mean, 17 is in the middle, but I want to be able to bring the 17 node up, right? I want to use the 17 node to split the 10 and the 20 apart. In order to do that, I prefer that if I have a little binary tree version of this, I'd like 17 to have as a left child 10 and as a right child 20, and that's not what happens here. Well, it can. This is a rotation. 17 and 20 are rotating against each other. So 17 is going to come up, 20 is going to go down, and now 17 is 20's parent. Now 17 wants to rotate up with 10 because I want 17 to be up at the top. 17 moves up. 10 moves down, and now I've rotated 17 to be the sort of root of its little mini node with three values in it. It's a little mini binary search tree with three values. All three of these versions that I've been through all correspond to the same 2, 3 node over here abstractly. But now, hey, I have this 17. This node's overfilled with three keys in it. I want to take that 17 and push it up to a parent. And I do that. And now this parent, well, the parent now has more than one key. There we go. We can see 
the binary representation of this of this tree all the way through it, right? And we've now inserted 18. Now, just to give you sort of a, a bullseye view on what the rotation is doing, if I want to rotate y up to be x's parent, note, in this case, subtree A has a bunch, or node A, or subtree A, whatever A is, has a bunch of values less than x, and it's hanging to, it's, it's hanging to x's left. A is still hanging to x's left. B is hanging to y's left. What does that mean? It means B has values larger than x and less than y. After the rotation, I mean, after the rotation, x is going to be y's left child. So B, there's no room for B anymore, right? Because we're going to say that X is the left child of Y. What happens to B? Well, if B is larger than X and smaller than Y, then B is also smaller than Y, but larger than X. Y was X's right child. Y is now going to be X's parent. Uh, so great, there's room in X's right child for this node B, right? So we do that, and then in this case, Z had two children, Z, uh, C and D. Well, they're still hanging off C, no problem. So we had C is, you know, X's right child goes away, Y's parent goes away, right? We move Y up, we move X down. When Y moves up and X becomes its left child, B, is now going to hang off of off of x. Wow, that looks terrible. I'm just going to pretend it's not there. But we have this nice relation, right? Values in a are less than x, and that's less than values in b, which are less than y, and that's less than values in c, and less than d. And that relation holds for both of these trees, and so the rotation is going to work out just fine. One thing I should point out, when I gave this sort of expanded view before, I mean, look, I got this nice, I sort of gave this right-hand view to explain what's really happening in the binary tree view of a 2-3 node. You know, great, I've got 10 and 20. I've got 15 and 17. In this case, 10 and 20 are supposed to be one 2-3 tree, tree node. 0 and 5 are 1, 2, 3, 3 node. 15 and 17 are 1, 2, 3, 3 node. But of course, if you now take that and draw all the children rent links to be the same length, you know, I mean, like this 10 link is really long for its left subtrial and its, its right link is really short, you'll see the tree isn't perfectly balanced. It doesn't look like, when you draw it as a binary tree, it doesn't look like all of the nodes are. Uh, well, for sure, all the leaves don't look like they're at the same level. So what happens here? Well, the right hand of the side of the tree is actually skewed to be a little bit deeper than the left hand side of the tree. Because, well, I have only one link to go to my left child, and I have two links to go to my middle child or my right child. So what happens is you're going to have sort of this, you know, slightly different depths for your left of your child, you might get the right side of the tree is twice as deep as the left child of the tree. But even if you have a tree that's unbalanced, you know, some leaves are twice as deep as the other leaves, that's still going to give you a balanced tree. Twice as deep doesn't sound good, but it's still logarithmic, right? Okay, that's the intuition for the binary view of the two, three trees.